Hi, everybody. This is Marlene with Miami Ghost Chronicles, Stories of the Supernatural. How are you all doing today? And today, I have a, a wonderful lady with us today. Her name is L. Sydney Fisher. And she's not only an author, she is an Amazon number one best-selling author. Uh, she's written a book, uh, The Haunting of Natalie Bradford. And... Um, her love affair with reading and writing began at an early age. As a matter of fact, we were talking about before we started recording that we both have that in common. And she has a sensational desire for knowledge, uh, which launched a curiosity into the world of the supernatural and unexplained that has spanned a lifetime. Uh, Sydney has a BA in English from the University of Mississippi and a master's in education from the University of Missouri. Uh, she is the proud mom of two teenagers and a golden retriever mix named Willy Wonka, which I love that name, Sydney. I love that name. <laughs> how, are you, <laughs> how, are you? Uh, how are you doing today? Good, good. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. My pleasure. Um, this, yeah, I mean, we were talking about, you, you've had a series of books. The one we were talking about was The Devil's Board, which is, we'll get into that later. But I'm going to ask you what I ask everybody, Sydney. How, how did you, uh, did you have a paranormal experience as a child, as was an adult? How, how did you uh, get, it, basically open that door into the supernatural? Well, and this is a, a question that a lot of people ask me in mm -hmm. lectures and things people. Um, I tell people all the time, my response is usually the same, you know, we're not born believing in the paranormal. Usually it is um, something that, you know, you get interested in or you're fascinated by because of some sort of life experience that you've had or, or something, an experience of the paranormal that mm -hmm. um, has, you know, created this, this curiosity that you have. Mine was at, at age of eight. Um, I had a uh, strange experience um, at Lindenwood, which is the the mansion, the home that is that I talk about, and that is the setting for most of the uh, book, The Haunt of Bradford, which was a number one bestseller mm -hmm. on Amazon, uh, based on true events. Very fascinating story. But that is where my first uh, experience happened. There, I was basically in the right place at the right time if you want to put it like that yes. for you know for that type of thing to happen and all of this stuff was going on already with this family with the Bradford family and I just happened to be there mm -hmm. and was a witness to some of this phenomena that was going on okay. um, so and and that created it and that spawned it and that just as the years have gone on and my own strange experiences it seems sometimes Marlene mm -hmm. as if I literally was destined to be a part of this whole paranormal world yes. it is it, it's it's like I, I can't get away from it even if I want to I, I understand very well what you're saying very well uh, and you know what Cindy? a lot of people think well and I, I, I you know after a while you interview some people when especially when as kids they have this some type of experience you know some are more in your face than others but you have t two types you have the kind like yourself that you it opens a doorway for you and you become more curious and you want to know more and then there's others that they go totally in the other direction they never want to have anything to do with the supernatural or the paranormal again uh, it's like you can't even talk about it around them uh, mm -hmm. so I it's because it scares them I think. Oh, yeah, yeah yeah it was like I never want to uh, you know what sometimes it's you know they do have uh especially sometimes if they have to live in a place where when you're a child you can't move away you have to endure it mm -hmm. and uh, as they grow older they just they they don't even want to be in the same room when any type of conversation comes up about the supernatural the paranormal a ghost forget it i used to work with a girl like that a long time ago she um she she didn't want to see people in costumes uh and it was halloween everybody knew she was going to take the day off that's how bad it was for her so wow. but i understand I, i'm one i'm like you uh where, yeah, even though you might have moments that you're, like, kind of scared, it's almost like it's the same kind of scare you people go to when you see the horror movies. Like, I'm scared, but this this is great. Right. And I think the thing that, uh, you know, when you have years and years of dealing with this or being, you know, it seems to follow me around and everything. And when you, you know, I've researched, you know, paranormal, I've done paranormal research for over 20 years. 
five years, mm-hmm. um, most of my life. Um, and, and so it's, it's no longer it's something that really, really frightens me. Right. Um, it's, it's become more of a fascination. And I've had, um, you know, I have uh, mediumship abilities okay. that I have um, developed um, over the years. And of course, uh, first realized that those things were going on with myself, uh, the clairvoyance and things when I was around 14 or 15 years old. Okay. And, then, and then later I had a near-death experience, uh, NDE. Did. And and it, it just absolutely skyrocketed that um, ability. And so, you know, it is so, it's so strange. The veil between life and death is very, very thin. Yes, it is. Um, when, when I tell people often, you know, look, if I go into a reported haunted location and it's just a, a few ghosts hanging around, that doesn't bother me really. I, mm-hmm. I'm very curious about why they're there. There, there's mm-hmm. always a history. I'm, I'm a history geek, so I always love to find out the history of the location, and usually that tells me the story and the mystery solved. Exactly. Um, on the other hand, though, when you're dealing with something that is spiritual, um, that has never roamed the earth in yes. a human form, yes. That's completely different, and that is very frightening, and um, I just, uh, you know, I detach myself from those type of situations, Mm -hmm. and usually, and there's always reasons, too, that those type of things are going on. It's, um, there's always some reason for this. In fact, already just this week, today is Friday, I'm sitting here thinking, what is today? Today is Friday, and I've been contacted by two individuals already who, uh, usually it's every week, but someone wanting to ask me questions about dark shadows and things that they're going through, and it's always the same question that I ask them, and I ask them after they've told me some things, I ask them, what's going on in your life? Hey, you know what? You know what? So many people overlook that as being the Mm -hmm. catalyst sometimes for Mm -hmm. things on a paranormal Mm -hmm. or supernatural. No, everybody Mm -hmm. looks to the outside instead of looking inward. That's a very, Mm -hmm. very good question right there. Oh, I always ask them, what's going on in your life? How, what's, what are you thinking about? What have you been dwelling on? What's Mm -hmm. bothering you? And, and there's all, and I said, and, and it always comes back, you know, to, uh, there's a reason why that these things are, are showing up and that yes. kind of thing. And um, But anyhow, you know, I've been around with some ghosts for a long, long time, and sometimes they're kind of cool. Yeah, and, and, and you know, and uh, in my experience, Sydney, uh, a lot of people don't realize that the discarnates are around, are around us all the time. A lot of people think that you have to go to a so-called haunted place to run into a ghost or have a paranormal experience and there's a lot of discarnates sometimes that are not tied to location they might be stuck for a number of reasons uh Mm -hmm. and and i agree with you you know when they're human even the people that were you know not so nice in life and of course they're not so nice in death sometimes they give a bad vibes because even when they were you know i don't know if you've ever been around somebody that just made you feel uneasy sometimes you get the same mm-hmm. feeling when you can run across a spirit like that but when you're talking a non-human entity like you said that has never been human you cannot negotiate with it the same way you do with another human being even if it's a dead one because they don't have a moral compass like we do and that Correct. is when you're really getting into deep and dark waters <laughs> uh and unfortunately um in my experience that i've uh done which it was a, an excellent question. Um, unfortunately, like attracts like. And a lot of times when people, like you said, what they're experiencing, what they're dwelling on, what they're feeling, sometimes what they pull in, that neg- which nine times out of ten it's negative, uh, is what brings in things of this nature that seem to Correct. feed off this type of dark emotion. Correct. So, so yeah, and no, the, and it can, yeah, I'm sorry, and it can be very it can be very frightening for the individual that's oh, having yeah. to go through this. You know, um, yes. you know, people calling me and and asking me or sending me messages and asking me what to do about they're being attacked, mm-hmm. um, they're being held down in their bed at night, they're being choked, yes. uh, they're being pushed, they're this, they're that. Um, a lady this week uh, recounted a 
an experience that she had where she literally she saw a hooded figure that was sitting on the end of her sofa. Uh, and, and she had never had a paranormal experience ever in her life, mm -hmm. ever. Uh, if you met the lady, you would, you would be like I, I was. You would look and say, there's no way that this woman would make this up. Right. Uh, I mean, she just was, you know, she, she was not somebody that would, she's a wonderful uh, lady. But she, um, she said that actually the figure, she watched the figure, and it, it, she watched it walk into a wall. So I immediately asked her, and she talked a little bit more about her, um, what was going on, uh, you know, in the home and stuff. Mm -hmm. And so I asked her a few other questions, and I said, what was happening to you? at that time and I said and that's and I said so when things calm down uh have you seen them again she said I've never seen that again ever right. and she said but I'll I'll never forget it and I said well you know and you're doing the head nod while people are telling you this and you're going yes and this is when it brings about and what can you know and then they want to ask you questions of what can I do to rid myself of it uh and of course me being raised, I've been raised in the South and was brought mm -hmm. up in a, in a church environment and as a Christian and, and that kind of thing, mm -hmm. I do point them toward, um, you know, it does, it, 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 you know, things mean different things for people. Sure. But I, I tell people that the light dispels the darkness. Mm -hmm. And um, I always point them in the direction of uh, what their focus is. And I said, um, negativity will dissipate um, as you are creating more positive thoughts right. and things, and you are looking to heaven and looking to God rather than um, allowing that to overtake you, because it has one intent, and that is to it thrives on yes. your fear. Yes. And thrives on your uh, depression or whatever it is that may be, you know, bringing you down. Yes. Yes. And that's exactly how it works. It Basically what it does uh, in slow steps sometimes, it's it's the corruption of a human being. And it, it is. That's how you do that to a human being. You know, um, you make them sad, helpless. You alienate them sometimes from family, from friends. You isolate them. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and sometimes it's it's a process. It, it's not like Hollywood that three days later and, you know, things are flying around <laughs> your house. Uh, but, yeah, um, yeah, people don't realize that sometimes it's, um, and I'm going to use that word insidious, uh, the way it works, especially when right. you're talking something dark like that. Right, and people will see that in that book that we were referring to, the the, mm -hmm. the Devil's Board. Yes, the that, Devil's Board. That is a great example of that type of spirit taking advantage of a group of kids that are playing Ouija. Right, because that's the premise, because that book is based on a true story, and, and, and I know that you said that you've changed all the, all the identifiers, whether it's the place, the people. Uh, to maintain right. the privacy, but it's based on a true story, and that's how it starts out, that they were doing what, spirit contact on a Ouija board? Yes, they were playing with the Ouija board, started out with three or four of them, turned into a group of around 40 kids. 40? You know, I, yeah, I call them kids, and I hope people are not offended by me calling them kids, <laughs> but you know, I'm grown now, and I yeah, have I know, teenagers I know. I, I do. myself, so... <laughs> So I, I, I have a couple of teenagers myself, so yes. I, I should call them young adults. So these yes. students on campus you know, were um, the three or four of them that were engaged in this. It started it all. It turned into, you know, 30 to 40 ki uh, students on the campus mm -hmm. that got to play in with the Ouija board. And it just grew and grew. And you can see in the story, you know, it, it's going to lead you from chapter to chapter. It's going to something constantly going on, um, but you'll see how that it can turn into. Um, I mean, literally, this it it had Amber Simmons right where it wanted her. I mean, okay. she absolutely was hypnotized to the point to where she would go in her room and play the Ouija board by herself. Yes, she didn't God. need. It. Yeah, she and, didn't and need any. She didn't even care if anybody else went with her. Right. She wanted to talk to Ron Banks and had completely fallen into this thing of thinking that he was her friend. Right. And Ryan Banks is the spirit that they contacted. Correct. Uh, and that 
that, that in which you hear that so often that there's uh that they try to establish the spirit tries to establish like a relationship in other words correct with usually correct. the weakest link with the weakest like the one that's the easiest to get to and you know she kept going back and kept going back and all that and it, it, it's just amazing it really was um you know and it'll do it was kind of like a magician it has that effect of wowing its audience right and you know it'll tell you things about yourself or maybe tell you things about your future and that kind of thing the thing about the Ouija board though in contacting the spiritual world is that you just like you've heard this before I know and some of your listeners will be saying yep we've heard this before mm -hmm. you never know you never know who you're contacting oh, but you not. but you really don't how can you know you know what I spoke and you to don't you. want to ask it to show itself oh no no you're not and um, you know I was talking to an, uh, another gentleman his name is Ed Becker and he he wrote a story about experiences he had back in the 1970s where he lived with his wife and and he he gave a great example that he says uh you know when it comes to that spirit contact whether it's the ouija board he says it's the same as if you throw out a cell phone or mobile phone in the middle of a prison yard who do you think is going to be the one that gets to it <laughs> it's usually the biggest baddest person or guy in there which means that when you do that spirit contact, unless you really know what you're doing, chances are that who you're going to get at the receiving end is not the one you want. But of course, they're not going to come across that way. They're going to try to disarm you with either, uh, same thing, um, I'm a child, uh, I'm either a girl or boy, depending on who they're trying to, you know, basically, I don't want to use the word seduce because that's really what they do, uh, and disarm mm -hmm. you into not thinking there's any danger. And on what you described to this person, all of a sudden, their communication with this entity, this person, whatever they thought of in their mind that they, they've made it is more important than anything else. Because that's what it sounds like. She must, it sounds like she kind of like, what were her friends thinking? I imagine they were they worried uh, what was happening with her? Well, I Correct. Right, they were, and and even and especially Rachel in the book kept telling her. Um, Rachel was one of the ca characters and kept mm -hmm. saying, you know, she needs to be leaving this thing alone. And right. some of the some of the other students within that really close niche group there, there were four or five of them there that were very very close, and, right. and things started happening to them: bad dreams, and then okay. bad luck, and all kinds of crazy stuff going on. Mm -hmm. And Rachel contributed all of this back to this uh, to this board and I mean okay. there were apparitions that were showing up I mean they really? were having oh it was unbelievable things were happening oh. in the dorm room but you know it was a they were all sweet mates okay. so you had one you had one bathroom there in the middle and you had the two dorm rooms you know on each side so you could open the doors mm -hmm. and walk back and forth through the restroom you know right um that joined the two rooms and all um well, they, they were playing the uh, the Ouija down at one end of the hall, but at one point, they would come down to uh, Rachel and Josie's room in real life, this went on. Mm -hmm. They were they were sitting in that uh, second room there, playing just playing that board, and oh my goodness, um, they were having furniture moving around the room, wow. coat hangers swinging back and forth on, in the closet. And it was, and, and the, the spirit actually got, got pretty mean. Right. Even in real life, you'll see in the book, there mm -hmm. is a scene where Amber starts to, uh, you know, taunt the ghost and everything, taunt mm -hmm. the spirit. Exactly. And in and in real life, that really happened. It, it really happened. So there are elements of that story that are, you know, word for word or scene for scene as it actually took place in real life that I recreated and set up in the devil's board. It but, sounds like some of them kind of caught on along the way that what was going on was not good. And this, you had this one girl who was the one that was just, what, oblivious to it? She was, but I think that it was starting to take over, to take okay. her over, All right. um, literally, and um, because she, you know, the way that the spirit started out, it started out telling her, you know, I, I was a student on campus, 
one time. I was about 21 years old. Seems like what I remember him telling. And he said that I got my heart broken. Uh, I played I played baseball. I was a baseball player on campus, and I fell in love with the girl who broke my heart. And then he turned nasty, and he said, you know, and I'm going to make everybody pay for all of the sorrow that I experienced while Ooh. I was there. Oh, wow. yeah. Wow. And how, oh, let me ask yeah. another thing, Sydney. How long did... Did it take for this to happen? Was it weeks, months? How how long did that process? It was months. It was probably it was at least three months that this okay. was going on, okay. and um, oh yeah, okay. and and it stretched out, and they and you know it built it built on it just got worse. It was progressive. It was progressive, just like a disease of some sort that sure. is progressive. Sure. Um, it just built, continued to build until this girl was so. Uh, assumed with um, consumed with playing the board that she no longer even invited you know Stephanie into the picture she just went and um, sat down there and she'd light a candle and yeah and I can imagine that probably once they started pointing out to her hey what's going on she was like ah, you know it's like I'm going to do it even more in other words it was she was on this this was uh, her friendship or her relationship with whatever was more important than the connection with the real humans, the, her friends, especially once they were pointing out to her, I imagine, hey, what's going on? Or don't you realize what's going on? It's like, yeah, we're all she, jealous she of my great relationship. I know that sometimes uh, when people are, you know, when they're in that uh, state, whether it's uh, influence or oppression, that's what happens where their perspective on reality is not quite there they kind of start getting that you're against me kind of mentality right and you know even this at this particular campus mm -hmm. um students still play with the widget board and it was it's so crazy even yeah. after i was doing all the research on this particular story um I, people coming forward that were kind of try, putting two and two together and saying well, let me tell you about what happened to me and, and all this kind of thing. So, it was, you know, it's, it just never stops there. And I tell them all the time, well, we remember that we've heard about this and over the years. So, I mean, that the legend of Ryan Banks it still lives in, you know, around that campus. But it makes you wonder also how many of them, Sydney, maybe kind of put it in the urban myth you know like it's real but you, right. you understand they kind of like oh yeah because that happened what in the 80s right in the 1980s it did mm -hmm. okay so some of them might think oh you know oh, whatever yeah they think oh yeah but they kind of like like all things it's lost in translation over time and um, right right yeah and and that plays out a lot more. And I'm not gonna I'm not gonna I'm not gonna ask any questions and do any spoilers on the book so that people could go and get it because I think it's it's just a the that it's based on something that happened, which by the way happens a lot more frequently than people think. Because it now does. a lot of this paranormal shows because even back in the nineteen eighties, yeah, they had a couple of shows, but there wasn't like all this um thing that they've got now with all these reality shows, you know that are tied into paranormal investigations and stuff. Um, and people don't realize that um, unless you know what you're doing, or in some cases, depending, like what you said, what's going on in your life, you might be really vulnerable, and this is the last thing you want to get involved mm -hmm. in. Um, mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, you know, everything that I write uh, up to this point has been inspired by true events. Um, you know, the, the book, See No Evil, the, uh, the Bradford series, mm -hmm. the, the Phoenix mission is, um, the Phoenix series is course. Now that is a military themed, okay. uh, project and it was based on research that I've done. There is, uh, Seth Phoenix is a fictional character, but many of the scenes and the actual research and things that are in the book are authentic okay. and it is based on, uh, um, our military, the the United States Army, uh, you know, conducted research into paranormal remote viewers, uh, into paranormal yes. research for, you know, you probably remember the Stargate. Right, exactly. And, yeah, that's um, the one everybody talks about. Yeah. Right. And, you know, that went on for, gosh, for decades, for two or three decades, and we fundled over 
many dollars into that project. Some people still believe that that still goes on. The research, I would not doubt that at all. Mm -hmm. And I won't say too much about that because I don't want anybody knocking at my door and it was so yeah. funny. I <laughs> you don't want any men in black going, come with no, us, ma'am, please. <laughs> I, I, I know. And I, you know, it was so funny because when I was doing all that research, I, I started to get paranoid because of, you know, my browsing history. Oh, and it was so funny. Isn't that I bad when you start worrying about stuff like that you're thinking how much it's like this is a you know this this is like even though you have right. this internal dialogue trying to talk yourself out of it in the back of your mind you're thinking but what if exactly and you know i kept going oh my lord the fbi is gonna be knocking on my door going who are you and what is wrong what, what are you doing and you know it was it's the coolest research ever though mm. i absolutely loved that project um uh, I absolutely loved it. That is a fascinating series, and of course, Russia had their own. Um, right, yeah, they were they were they were more of a big believer in uh, ESP really and were. PK abilities and doing all that. I think, even though they made oh, that yes. movie, Men That Stare at Goats, I think it was uh, with yeah. Clooney. It was, and I know that Hollywood yeah. sometimes there does their own version, which has very little to do with the reality. But I mean, right, right, um, and. Uh, but yeah, but that, there definitely was something to all of that. And so, but that is a, it's a really fast, fast uh, action book, uh, supernatural suspense. Mm -hmm. It's a cool story. Um, if there are men on your listeners that are thinking, hmm, I'd like to do a little, uh, read a little bit about psychic development and, and yes. you know, that's one of the best projects. I had a lot of fun doing that. That took I've spent about three years doing the research on that. Um, I can so imagine. that was a that was a lengthy, yeah that was a lengthy project, but I've absolutely loved it. It's been a bestseller consistently, always. You know, if people if they go to the website lsydneyfisher dot com, they mm -hmm. can click on that last page there, and there's a blog where I've actually posted things too as I do research that maybe okay. don't become books. Right. But there's things that they can take a look at where I sometimes will go on road trips and I will go into hotels and, and different places and I'll tell you and I'll post some pictures. Mm -hmm. But it's something that I'm doing with a group of empaths that I have. Uh, it's, it's absolutely wonderful. I've contacted two or three other empaths that I have talked to and mm -hmm. we partner together. So I take them with me times and tomorrow we're going to visit this will be my second time visiting this haunted location it is an antebellum home was a okay. plantation home okay um, but very very haunted and the and the the little girl ghost has not been seen or heard um since about the 1980s really um uh-huh but you know used to they could hear her now that is per the owner of the home, says that okay. she personally has not heard. Now, tourists that have come there, um, they may have said that they have heard something. But she says, me personally, and she lives in the house. And she right. says, you know, I haven't heard the little girl calling, and she would call mama. She's calling mommy, mommy. Okay. Um, she, she died when she, she got she was only like four or five years old, and she died on the staircase. She strangled between the, the uh, you know, the spindles yes. on the stair. Oh, my God. Yeah. On the railing, she got her neck in that. Oh, my God. Yes. A little girl. This was in the 19th uh, century. And um, they say, I mean, I've seen her bedroom where the, 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 the bed is sunken in they say where she lays down sometimes and the the covers you know will be in disarray sometimes it'll be wrinkled okay from where it looks like someone has laid and there's absolutely no explanation for it that's gone on for years and years but not too long ago i visited this location and it was just amazing at the activity i picked up on my em um ef uh, emf um you know, scanner. Yes. I'm stumbling with the words today. My ghost detector, as they call it. Uh -huh. um, it was it was just amazing what I picked up. And um, the house is up for sale now. So oh. I got together with some of, some of the other empaths and I said, we absolutely must make a trip. 
before that house gets sold. Yeah, I was about to say because <laughs> once it's sold, you don't yeah. know the new owners are going to say, "Forget it." <laughs> yeah, Thanks, you don't know. If I'll come again here. So we ab- yes, we absolutely have to go back, and I want to use. I want to go in um, and see if I can connect with the spirit of the little girl. Um, see if I can see her and that kind of thing using my my own abilities. Mm-hmm. That I mentioned to you, um, you got very interested. I noticed you perked up when I told you that I had had an NDE. Yes, um, yes, yes, absolutely. I'm glad you brought me because in the back of my mind, I got to ask her about that. That's like what what happened. I was babysitting a lady's children. Uh, I was about let's see, was I 15 years old? It's been a long time ago. I was um, I was babysitting a lady's children that I went to church with. Remember, I live in the South in Mississippi, mm-hmm. and this was rural Mississippi um, where the lady lived, and they're in. In the rural South, for those of you listening who don't know. Um, there are little county roads, and a lot of those little county roads have bridges with no rails or anything on them. We call them farm bridges. Okay. So, you, yeah, you, you drive over it, and it's a one-liner, so you better be very, very careful when you're going across it, and you hope that you don't meet a car coming the other direction because somebody's going to have to stop. Right. You both can't go over that bridge. Uh-huh. But I was traveling home. It was about 10 o'clock at night, and um, I had never been across the bridge. I had only been across it the one time going to this lady's home. Okay. And I was going home. It was very dark, and I could not see. There was no, you know, there's no lights out in the rural Mississippi. There's no street lights. Yes. And I came upon it very quickly and went off the side of it so a three to four thousand pound car turned upside down oh yeah and crashed into a creek that was a 30 to 40 foot drop (gasps) so so you can imagine how the car absolutely looked like a pancake um, when a, the wrecker service came later and actually picked up this car and lifted it out of this creek, I was I drowned. I literally I was say, was, did it know, land on yeah upside down? Yeah, or? it was upside down. It was upside down, and I was suspended oh um, in the car. Yeah, I was suspended in the car. Broke every glass in the car, but I didn't know that. Um, and and I of course hit the windshield. Um, so. I'm hanging upside down, and all of this water is coming in, and it's a muddy, it's a Mississippi red bank, muddy oh bank, my God. and mud is everywhere, and sand, so if you open your eyes, you can't see, so you have no time to take a breath or anything, and there it is, and, you know, and it's just, the clock is ticking very, very quickly, yeah. and so it was a, a near, you know, it was exactly what you probably have heard before Mm -hmm. of uh, the soul leaving the body and I traveled into a light and um, I actually experienced a male voice that told me just to walk toward the light because at one point I was a little bit confused right um and so but it was a I'm telling you the whole thing of and it was a light unlike anything that there are no human words. You will hear people that have had these experiences. Yes. There is no human words to describe this. It was pure, pure God's love, unconditional. I mean, it's, it's believable. There is something when you pass, when you cross over, and the veil, like I've said before, it's very thin between life and death. Yes. Uh, there's no pain. There's no nothing. I mean, it just, it's its fantastic. So there's no fear. I have no fear of dying. Mm-hmm. Um, there's nothing to fear. Absolutely nothing to fear. But it's its a really, physically, to describe to you, the physical feeling of passing felt like to me when the soul was leaving my body. Okay. Um, if you've ever had a fainting spell. Have you ever felt like you was about to faint? Yeah, one. I'm not, but yeah, one time I felt like, yeah, one of those that every time I was going to get up, I had to sit back down. Yes, I know what you mean. Yeah, you feel a little woozy. Mm -hmm. It kind of felt like to me like it was uh, like a vacuum, just literally just sucking the 
soul right up out of the body. And you're aware of everything going on. You know, I could see everything. I could see me in the car. Um, I was aware of everything. Could, so you you, you went in that, that what they call that, that observer mode where basically you're looking down at oh, yeah. yourself, at your body, in other words. Wow. Oh, yeah. And, and if you do your research on NDEs and people who've had them, you know, it's a transforming experience. It yes. changes your life forever. Um, the thing is, is that if you have natural abilities, supernatural abilities that maybe mm -hmm. you haven't done much with, you haven't practiced meditation or tried to develop things, a lot of times when people have had these experiences, they find those abilities magnified like crazy. Oh, yes. And, and, and I, you know, I, I really, my personal opinion is it's because, it, I mean, now it's easy for me to go into some places and stuff. And um, it's easy for me to connect because I've, you know, almost been there, you know, yes. kind of, you know, I did come back into my body. Um, because I looked down, I turned and looked and I said to the voice, but I'm leaving behind my mom and yeah. my brother and my dad. And I am not kidding you in a blink of an eye. It's like all of a sudden I became awake and I was, my body was floating out one of the windows in the car. Wow. Oh, yeah, and then I had to climb up a 30 to 40 foot bank and my fingers were bleeding and oh, it was it was unreal. You know what's and I, that's what I hear a lot of times that people that come back, it's because of the people that they're leaving behind, not because they they don't want to go, but they think of the, the sadness and the pain for the people they love that are going to be left behind. Mm -hmm. And you know that you know that that saying where people say sometimes, and I've said this a lot myself about, um, I love the feeling of coming home or feeling at home somewhere. When you pass over, that's that, that is that expression. You, you literally feel like it's home. Yes. I mean, it's the most wonderful feeling ever. So, um, yeah, definitely. And, and, you know, to, to your, I hope that your, your listeners will, um, take a look at some of my books on my website at lsydneyfisher.com because I'm going to start very soon a new series really? called the Celestial Series. Okay. And it's going to have some quick reads, some, uh, Kindle short stories or, you know, it's the type of stuff you can be sitting in the airport and you've got a layover and you're like, yes. I just need something that would it's inspiring it's not too spooky scary you know l sydney fisher writes the spooky scary stuff so you'll still get a little bit of that but at the sure. same time I, I want it to be something that would be that deals with the light and that supernatural aspect as well so yes some lifting up as well absolutely well you know what and and unfortunately sydney the lifestyle that now we have where basically so many times we're multitasking. So we take the opportunity whenever you can, uh, especially if, you know, whether it's the reading and if you can't read because of where you're at, actually being able to listen to something audio, it's great mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. that's, that's the compromise I think that we make because at some point, um, I don't know about you, but sometimes I don't want to see the news. I don't want to like... <laughs> I want a little bit of escapism. Uh, and I think that for a lot of people, myself included, it's a stress buster. It's release your stress when you kind of like let yourself get into the story and just go wherever it takes you. And that's, that's I think that's, uh, we always need some type of stress relief. We sometimes, too much reality is not good for a person. Yeah, like, you know how women, they say, you know, when, uh, when things go wrong, what is it? When things get tough, the tough go shopping. Well, in some cases, um, I don't know about, to me, getting into a good story, uh, just, just it's like, to me, it's refreshing. And and sometimes that's how you have to do it. I mean, I've, I, we, we talked about this even before we started rolling. You know, I've been a reader since I was a kid, but as I grew older and I had responsibilities and I had, and I always used to have books and sometimes uh, 
I wanted to get into longer and more, uh, you know, novels, for lack of a better word, but I didn't have the time. And nowadays, um, it seems that despite all the technology, sometimes that's what we need. You know, we need different ways of accessing that uh, the story, whatever the story is. And I personally, I love supernatural stories. You know, you're right up my alley. <laughs> I'm telling you, your your brand of, of writing is fantastic. Sydney. Oh, my God, did I lose her? Oh. Oops. Let's see if I can get her back. Okay, folks. Let's see if we can get Sydney back. Sydney. Oh, my God. Sydney. I'm on. Can oh. you hear me? Yeah, now I can hear you. Oh, thank God. I thought I'd lost Yay. you. Yay. Yep. It's just that paranormal stuff trying to take place, trying to mess us I up. I have done shows that I've titled Paranormal Sabotage, so believe me, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, it's weird because I had not touched a thing, and I actually I looked up, and I yes. heard you saying that, and I, I made my screen come up, and my microphone was off, and I said, okay, who did that? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you know, I, was, I, I would say, you know, if you're doing any type of writing about any of these uh, government type of stories, it's like, you know, it's the men in the black doing something to, <laughs> do something exactly. to, to throw off your audio or your electronics. Hey, let's get a little par paranoid here. I hate to say it, but sometimes that's what it drives us to, you know. Um, now, you know, with so much technology, you feel like, okay, it's about the only place I have privacy is inside my head. Um, so, Sydney, uh, that's great that you've got that that going. Um, so it sounds like you're, you're just, you, you know, uh, talk about multitasking. You have stories that come out, and you're already working on one, and then you already got the next one planned so you were always got some projects, more than one going on. It's not what it sounds like. Yes, you have stuff, you know, as a writer, and, and I've been a writer since, you know, I was around eight years old, like I was telling you. And, mm -hmm. and um, you and I both share the same love of reading. And um, yes. that's kind of what birthed, as you read in my bio, that's kind of what birthed uh L. Sidney Fisher, the writer, I've always loved to write, loved to perform on stage, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, the writing, even though, uh, you know, things took a turn for me as far as acting and theater, um, the love of writing has never, ever gone away. And mm -hmm. just, it, the, you know, the curiosity with the supernatural and all of these things, it kind of just makes you feel like, or it does me personally, that this is what I'm supposed to do. Yes. Um, you know, this is my story. Um, you know, with the clairvoyance um, right. is absolutely wonderful. The times when I'm able to help someone heal yes. um, who's going through grief, um, a loss, and that type of thing. Um, I don't, you know, take money or publicize that or whatever. I'm just sitting here telling you this on the Miami Ghost Chronicles. But I do not, um, you know, I never have, you know, publicized to that, that, that I have those abilities. But right. occasionally someone has approached me and it's been certain circumstances. Right. Um, I have tried to help them. And in the last few months, I was able to help a lady who was going through um, some grief it okay. was terrible, mm -hmm. and um, I was able to connect with her grandfather, mm -hmm. and it was absolutely wonderful, and it, um, she's much better, and that's what it's all about, um, being able to help people heal. And you know what, Sydney, the thing is this, and a lot of people don't realize that when you get into that type of work, you know, you have to be very unselfish because it can be very draining because especially when people, depends on what they're going on, what's going on in their lives, sometimes... <laughs> it's a crisis in their life at that moment. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's things that they've been dealing with for years. Okay. Mm -hmm. And bottom line, usually there's a lot of pain underneath it all. Even, right. even if uh, on the outside, it looks like a supernatural or paranormal occurrence. When you start getting into some of these cases, 
Uh, sometimes mm-hmm. there's pain, there's loss, a lot of stuff. And for somebody that gets involved in that, trying to help somebody, people don't realize that can be very draining on the person helping them. And it's sometimes it's not for lack of wanting to help somebody. It's that it's, it, and it sounds like you're an empath among other things. That I am an empath. Yeah, I am difficult an IENFJ right, empath. Right. It's <laughs> difficult to, 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 let's say, talk to somebody and be around them and not, and just keep yourself totally uh, what can I say apart from it because you start right. feeling which is you know maybe why you're so effective you start feeling what they've gone through so it takes a lot right um, and I and I understand totally what you're saying as far as that maybe you need to you would need to pick and choose if you're gonna help somebody depending also on your schedule and I mean there's a, a lot of things out there um, but I can also see because at the end of the day what we're talking about is that you're a storyteller you tell stories, you know, based on, you know, this it sounds like what you love to do, whether it's through the writing or at one point when you were telling me that you were considering um, going into acting, what you like to do is to weave that story. Um, and to me personally, I mean, I, I love fiction, but I also love stuff that I know is real especially when it's woven to sound like fiction, like, you know what I'm saying? It's like, that's, right. that's I think, is the hallmark of a great author. And uh, and what you're talking about, I, I can't help but think that it's got to enhance and help you when you sit there and you're putting together these stories. Because, right. you know, it's authentic, in other words. You know, when you talk right. to people or you research that firsthand because you know yeah you could go through records and get facts but when you have that face-to-face validation from somebody that's telling you I had this experience this is what I felt or what I'm feeling yeah it's yes it, it does it, it authenticates what you do yeah absolutely absolutely and, and I think it translates over you know um, when an artist which is what a writer is produces something uh, you mm-hmm. see it you see the difference between ones that are mechanical versus the ones that that uh, that feel very human and that's why i think that more than likely you're number one best-selling author on amazon because of that because uh it comes across it comes across in your writing uh and um, of course i am going to put uh, a link to your website on the credits of the show for anybody that wants to you know visit your website uh, and so forth, and also, you know, keep abreast of, like you said, you have a blog on your website, right? As far as I do. Mm-hmm. things that you're I doing, do. and um, there's, uh, yeah, especially, I myself personally know that when I have a favorite author, I follow the next whatever it is that they're going to write. I'm there, like I want to know about it, please, like <laughs> the first, I want to get a hold of it right, right. away. Um, well, I would love for you to, and, and I would love for you to check out some of these books. And, yes, yes. Um, absolutely. Let me tell you something. Sometimes, and even though I like, the, I like to read, I like the action of reading. Sometimes, because of lack of time, I find myself having to like uh, do the audio book version. Even though to me it's not the uh-huh. same. Depends also on who does the the. Because I do, I do like to read. Um, it's just that sometimes that's that's almost like a compromise I have to make because of time that I don't have time. Right. I don't have right. time. Right. And that is uh, in the next couple of months, some of my books, too, will be going on audio. So that would be great. Be sure, yeah, be sure. And, and for you audio people that love audio, be sure and check back. Yes. Yes. Let me tell you something. That That to me is I remember once upon a time when I was doing the nine to five thing. Uh, that's what saved my, uh, my, you know, the, that commuting part. That's how, what made it yeah. bearable was uh, listening to, to things while I was in transit. That, that's really because, you know, that's, uh, and um, these, uh, let me ask you something. The, I know you told me that, that for this book, for the devil's board, you had actually been, <clears throat> even though, like I said, you had changed all the identities of everything. You had mentioned something to me earlier about that you had actually uh, spoken to two people that attended that college 
during that time and they told you independently about something that happened. Well, if you could repeat that. Yes, while I was doing the research um, for the Devil's Board, there were a couple of people who messaged me um, privately and told me about some personal experiences that they had had while being a student there on campus and they actually had lived, one of them had actually lived in the dorm in the room where in real life this took place with the Ouija board playing okay. and stuff. And there was five years uh, time span between when that individual went to the campus and when Amber Simmons was actually on campus. So he never knew Amber Simmons and really never knew anything much about the story. Mm -hmm. um, you know, she had left the campus um, five years before, and then he came along and ended up in her room, and it was just so odd because he got into a conversation one night on um, online, and he was sending me some messages, and he said, um, you know, I I lived in this dorm, and, and I was in this room, and um, that was a very dark time for me, and he was telling me some different things about some things personally that he was going through, and and he said it was the strangest thing because everything seemed to be fine until I moved into that particular building. Oh. Well, I never, t I never said a word about the room or the name of the building or anything. I just let him keep talking mm -hmm. because I wanted to see. I wanted to see what he would tell me, you know, because I knew that he wouldn't know. He he would have no way of knowing. Right. Um, and nobody else did either. I mean, this was all everything that I do in my research is I do it very secretive until I get ready for people to know you know what I'm working on but um, he t was talking and everything and he told me about uh, visiting this you know Sister Williams and, and all of these things and I just absolutely cannot believe it and so then I started saying well you know what room did you stay in and and he was he told me he said well it's the the room almost to the end of the hall and it's like uh you know three doors down on the left and so it, he continued to describe it and i never said a word you know finally when he's through and my chin is literally because he can't see me and i can't see him uh -huh. and when i am literally just cannot believe what i'm reading as he's typing um, I told him, I, I told him, I said, you were living in the room where Amber Simmons was contacting the Ouija spirit. And he oh. absolutely could not believe it. Um, oh. Totally freaked him out. He said, everything makes sense to me now. And then after him, after he contacted me, I had a lady um, who contacted me and told me the same type of things. And the two of them, the man and the woman, they were separate individuals who did not know each other and who had attended school there at different times. That is incredible. But had, this, but had the same story. So that was just, you know, another validation for me uh, into what I already knew to be true about the incident. But there you go. You know, it was just... I just couldn't believe it, I, you know, and, and after visiting the campus and going back and different things, I mean, I, I don't want to go, I don't want to go back again and, and see it. I, I'm, I'm afraid that I'll, I don't want anything following me home. <laughs> I don't want any attachments and things um, because I did research a book this, this past summer. There was a, a case that I researched for my series called The Haunted and uh -huh. it uh, it's a haunted history series. Um, but the volume two in that series that came out about the same time as the devil's board, the last two or three months ago. Um, oh my goodness. Um, it's been a long time, you know, over the years, you know, I've dealt with the ghost and stuff. The ghosts don't scare me. They don't bother me too much. Um, but what I encountered at one location that I went to when I was mm -hmm. researching stories for that, that was the worst thing ever. And it took me a few days, literally, to um, to get rid of that. Um, wow. It was extremely negative energy, and it most definitely was, of all things, 
while I was there. So that made it even worse. And I was only there for 15 minutes, 15 minutes. Yes. And I was offered to go inside the home. And I was like, oh, no, no, yeah. no. <laughs> you were like, no. And that, and, and, and that you know, no, and you no. me to that question because, uh, you know, sometimes people don't realize, especially, and I hate to say that, but sometimes when you are psychic, when you are sensitive, is when you get, there's more of a likelihood that something or somebody's going to follow you home because... <laughs> It, it was just a horrible, wretched feeling and bad dreams and things that stayed with me for four or five days. Um, and I got physically sick. Yes. Um, so th that was um, um, I, I absolutely. And I was and, and even the owner of the place contacted me later and the place is, is vacant right now. But the owner contacted me and asked me to please go back in would I go back would I go back and would I go inside I just I, I'm I, absolutely not no way <laughs> and what do you think do you I mean what it already had a history of being haunted it, it had it had a history oh yeah and, and they, some of the things were told to me not everything you know they told me a little bit before I went there and so, uh, you know, and I always tell them, don't tell me everything. Mm -hmm. Give me just a, you know, get me started. Just give me an idea of what I'm dealing with or whatever. And then let me gather details as I get there because I rely on my natural abilities, you know, to pick up on things. Well, it just was the, it was an astounding experience of dealing with uh, spirits that are, have never occupied a human body in human mm -hmm. form yes and the place is rampant uh, but right. now the place had a history of very negative activity that went on okay. so it attracts that it attracts that type of darkness yes, yes. so yes. that's not surprising necessarily but it is uh, it's ex very strong and there were some, uh, uh, there was a paranormal investigation that took place. Caps of Alabama mm -hmm. actually went over and gathered audio. And I did get to listen to some of the audio. Okay. Um, oh, yeah, there's no doubt. I mean, you know, it's really, funny. I, I said. You know what, this is, do I still got you, Sydney? Oh, boy. Yeah, here okay, I am. Okay, good, good, I'm good. Here. good. What I was going to tell you is, you know, a lot of people think that, you know, when, especially when you're talking non-human entities of this type, you know, that sometimes you get them because they're invoked through ceremonies or rituals. And I said, yes, you know, that's why, you know, they, you know, certain places where they say, well, they've done, uh, you know, they're Satanist and they're doing rituals. And I say, there's another way you invoke them. When you have people doing bad things, really bad things. Mm -hmm in a certain mm -hmm. place and that might not be a ceremony or ritual like with the candles and all that stuff going on but you are invoking that type of entity to come into that space and people don't realize it doesn't necessarily have to be a bunch of people with cloaks on <laughs> you know uh and all this other stuff going on you could invoke something and and you and from what you've told me that location had some type of history where um something dark and and usually in my experience um the basis of it is wherever you have prolonged and deep human anguish whether it's mental and or physical pain anguish this is what opens the doorway a lot of times for these type of entity to like come in come through into our plane and then then they you know people like you they you know you know, they desperately want to see if they could like wiggle in and something. One time, um, this happened like, I want to say maybe five or six years ago. I was in St. Augustine, which I've gone through a million times. And I went to the Tolomato Cemetery, which is the oldest cemetery in St. Augustine. It's closed down. And, and I went there after dark and I was on the outside. And I mean, I've been there a million times. And... <clears throat> I remember I stood at the gates because the gates were closed. And Sydney, something happened that I had been going around to different places. Like it was like a vacation in a way. I went from feeling physically fine, fantastic, great. The next morning after I woke up from going over there that night, it wasn't that I was sick. I was 
sick like you know like sometimes you have a cold and then after a couple of days you get better three or four days mm -hmm. i must have been sick for like two months <laughs> i mean oh, like, my you know sick my even though i felt better my energy was like gone mm -hmm. then i started thinking yeah. about it and i said you know what dum dum you know the Tolomato, not only is it a cemetery, but a lot of the people that were buried there were people that died from a lot of the diseases, like, you know, um, right. things that, you know, sometimes people don't die from anymore. You know, tuberculosis, smallpox, scarlet fever, yellow fever, because this is what killed, you know, a large, you know, towns, and that's where they ended up getting buried. And people don't realize that even standing on the other side of a gate, especially when you're because I really, I, I didn't protect myself. I was just looking in there like, oh, okay. And stuff like that can hook on to you. And it can really um, affect you health-wise. I think everybody's been sick. But I could tell by the quality of how sick I was and for how long that it was something. And it was right after that night that I had gone there. As a matter of fact, the next day at the hotel, I was ready to go home. I was like, I need to go home. I feel so sick. So I can wow. understand where you're coming from. Mm -hmm. um, that even, and, and in your case, you were only there for 15 minutes. Yeah, can you believe that? Uh, yeah, I believe 15 it. minutes. 15 minutes, and I saw the big, huge shadow um, that, you know, oh, uh, we were being stalked. We yeah. were being stalked while we were on that property. Yes. No doubt about it. Yes, uh, um, I spoke to like a couple of months ago, I spoke to the team leader of a paranormal team out of uh, Spokane, Spokane, Washington. He's telling me how his team went and they were doing an investigation of what used to be an old hospital slash, you know, asylum, that kind of thing. And wow. um, he saw something similar to what you're describing, very tall. He's a big guy, by the way. He's a real big guy. He sees a tall shadow figure in one of the hallways, red eyes, the whole nine yards. Mm. Mm. Stupidly does one of those confrontation provocations thing, and I told him, so I said, only men do that. <laughs> but anyway, he does this. <laughs> the end of the day, he comes back, all his mm. audio, a bunch of the materials that they had collected there was gone. It wasn't, it wasn't, it was, it was not good, or the cameras didn't work. And then after that, he told me, he says that the team fell apart, and he went into a very deep depression for close to a year, almost. And mm -hmm. by the time I spoke to him, he had come out of it. And he was okay. And he had started the team back up and everything was, you know, he had a bunch of things planned. But we were talking about it that, um, that it was after that encounter that he had at that hospital. Mm -hmm. And uh, without having actually been there, I'm positive that whatever mm. he ran across falls into that non-human category that we were talking about. Mm -hmm. yeah. And this and this owner of this home, um, her son actually had gotten pictures of this thing. Really? Mm -hmm. wow. it, it approached, uh, they had seen it, and um, they started taking pictures, just snapping pictures with their cell phone. Mm -hmm. And she sent me this, and I had a couple of people look at it to verify that it had not been photoshopped. You could not see. It looked black. I mean, in the in the picture, really, you can hardly tell. You can see a shadow-type figure that was almost trying to manifest. Mm -hmm. But there, in the, in the very corner of it, you have to really look hard. And then all of a sudden, I took some... Um, um, did some lightning on it of mm -hmm. the picture so that I could see if it would show it. But, oh, my goodness, it was just a, cl a clear face as clear as a veil, clear as it could be, mm -hmm, of this entity, whatever it was. And the eyes were like, you, you said that they were like, the man said they were a reddish. These, they do look like they glow, mm -hmm. kind of. Yes. But it actually had an animal look to yes. it it yes. looks like animal eyes like mm -hmm. a um yes a, a deranged like a mad dog yes and you know what and a lot That's of what people wig out with that but that is not the first time that i've heard that type of description sydney that really is, no. it looks it looks like a mad dog i'm not mm -hmm. kidding 
it it lit in this picture and, and that's what i saw i didn't see that face but i saw the outline of the shadow figure right during the 15 minutes that i was at that location and then when she sent me this i, I just i said never again that well you know it what it, 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 descriptions and what you know it sounds almost like something out of you know that novel that movie the island of dr moreau where yeah, they were doing the human animal hybrid and, and and you know i'm just trying to use that as far as for like right. imagination purposes but yes i've right. heard of that you know i've heard of those where you only see the eyes sometimes it's just the hood or the hat man or the tall or the shadow people but i have heard of things like that where uh if you can actually see some type of beyond the the red eyes there is some type of like inhuman slash animal kind of appearance which is God, you know, that's so scary. <laughs> it is scary. And so you say that you've had people, that's not the first time you've heard people say that then, nope. tell you. Wow. Nope. nope. And usually Gotta it's be. the same thing. Um, you get them, uh, 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 not all the times, but sometimes you also get the bad smells. Okay. Mm -hmm. That yeah. company. Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. And I was going to ask you with that family, is was it tied to the location or was it tied to them? It was tied. The family that it was a part of the family that had lived there and experienced some of this as well. But they they had moved out of the house. There had okay. been at this location. There had been um, people who had, were engaged in drug abuse. Mm -hmm. um, and then there that was the family though. The lady that I was dealing with, she was not. But some other people that had lived there prior yeah. to them moving in had been uh, engaged in things that were that would attract very negative uh, energy. Right. Um, but there had been a suicide and a murder at wow. that location. Um, so it, it, oh my goodness. And see, this is and, the thing, Sydney, when you hear about these places, okay, about all these events, that you hear murder, suicide, drug addiction, you know, and all the things, this is, okay. And it always makes you wonder what comes first, the chicken or the egg? Were mm -hmm. these people that were vulnerable and this entity pushed them you know what I'm saying? Into right over the brink? Mm -hmm. Or were their that's actions exactly. what opened the doorway to bring in? That's, that's, that's that, what I always wonder well, about. The suicide situation, uh, if you pick up that book, if you pick up volume two in the Haunted series, it's on, it's on Amazon. It, you know, if they go to, if any of your listeners go to lsydneyfisher.com, all my books are on the front loading page, so you mm -hmm. can click on any of it. But volume two, they're all on Amazon as well. But volume two is the one where you're going to read this story that I'm ta ta that we're talking about right now. Right. And right. what you just said, what you just said, Marlene, is exactly what happened to uh, a family member that lived there. This suicide situation, they lived there for six months. Okay. And this entity, whatever it was, it, it just, it's the kind of stuff that you see in, like we've referred to Hollywood. I mean, mm -hmm. seriously, it's yes. like something that you, you see in a horror movie. Yes. Or you, you just, it's unbelievable this man ended up killing himself yes yes but he kept saying that you would not believe he kept telling his family you would not believe the voices that i keep hearing right and then, oh it, it is it's horror <laughs> well no. that is definitely horror there you it know was. what and this is the thing that my degree is in mental health so you know i and i've always been a proponent you know like like what you talk about when you believe in the supernatural and you know you have people that when they start saying exactly what you just described i'm hearing voices you know there's the hardcore scientists or you know mental health counselors mm -hmm. are saying okay mm -hmm. schizophrenia mm -hmm. you name it they give you a laundry list and give them these meds and i'm thinking to myself that's not always the case and you still could have somebody that does have mental health problems and is experiencing the supernatural which is probably aggravating the symptoms because i've seen that a lot Okay, mm -hmm. so and pick and choose, you know, and, and again, uh, we come into that where we talk about vulnerability, the vulnerable person that ends up talk about the wrong place, uh, you know, mm -hmm. to to um, to put somebody in that uh, and or that, you know, when they when they start saying I'm hearing, you know, I'm hearing people talking to me. What's the first thing most people think of when they look at them is like, oh, what's wrong with you? You're hearing what? Okay, do we need to take you to the psychiatrist right. or the hospital? And a lot of times mm -hmm. it, just, it isn't mental health. It is not. 
even though it, it does the the what they describe you know sounds like a symptom of a mental illness and i think uh, a lot of people unfortunately they they're poo pooed <laughs> When in reality, they're, they're talking about something that is real for them just because nobody else can see it or hear it. Right. And it's unfortunate. It's unfortunate when you come across those. But you know what? From what you're telling me, you're a smart lady not to go back in there. And I weren't. Um, I wouldn't if I were you. <laughs> no, no. I, I did not need to know. It. You know, I did not need any more validation. I believed every yeah. word. Those, <laughs> you know, it, it, sometimes when you meet people and they tell you, oh, I got a ghost, you're like, okay. Yes. No, I believed every word these people had told me. Yeah. I, I was like, convinced. Yeah. It's like, believe me, I had 15 minutes worth and that was enough for me. I can't imagine Absolutely. actually living Absolutely. And I, and I said, you know, I'm so sorry that you all had to encounter some of the things that, that you did. But I, I do not need confirmation. I believe every single yes. thing that you have told me. Yes. 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 Absolutely. Uh, well, Sydney, uh, thank you so very much for spending this time. Um, it's been so interesting. I love this interview with you. Uh, I could talk to you for hours and hours, which is unrealistic. But thank you again so much for spending this time. I truly, truly appreciate it. And like I said, I'm going to have a link to your website. And I've been showing slides of the covers of your last few books out there, uh, which I, it's like hard to pick. Which which do you start with? Uh, and uh, Aww. Thank you so much, and I'm hoping to bring you back on when you get those you. new books out again, okay? And I happy know. ghost you hunting let me adventures. Know. You keep in touch. Absolutely, darling. Mom, you got it. You Thank keep you. in touch, and I appreciate you so much. I'm so glad that I got to meet you. I hope that you all are having some warm, good weather in Miami. Yes. Um, <laughs> it's very cold here, um, yeah. so we're just yes. above freezing. But oh my God. Uh, anyhow, let me tell you something. Even for even for South Florida, it's a, a it's warmer than it normally is. It, it really is, really? you know, but of course here it's hot or hotter. That's, that's the two variables we that's got. That's true. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and humid, uh, thrown in for good well, measure. Okay. And definitely keep in touch with me and Marlene. I yes. thank you so much for having me on the show oh, and pleasure. I look forward to talking to you again sometime. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Sydney. Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye. What -bye. Bye -bye. a wonderful lady. Isn't she great? <laughs> I love it. I love it. Let me tell you something. I'm not kidding. She is an author after my own heart. We were talking right before we started rolling. We're talking. The, yes, I'm going to let my dweeb out. That we, I was a reader. I was a nerd. I was a nerd before the term nerd became known. We were talking about, you know, that when I was seven years old, I would... Um, hassle you know my mom take me to the library take me to the library and i would walk out with 10 books that was every week yes i was a bookworm officially and we were talking about and i was saying you know that i think that if uh if there's one addiction that i could say i am addicted to it would be to reading um and um and even now it's sometimes when i listen to things i do it because if not i can't Get to the story but always my preference has always been to reading actually reading the stuff uh, and i could tell you because i was looking at some of the storylines of some of her books and it's like oh my god like i wasn't kidding like where do i start which one would i start with because it's like yes you know based on true stories with a supernatural slant but well written so that it pulls you in and um makes you want to leave the light on when you go to sleep that kind of yeah yeah what can i say but um yes absolutely I, I think you should check out her book she's a number one amazon author okay uh and uh not on one book on several books on several books on several series of books and again i want to say this this is somebody that doesn't just like um you know besides the fact that she basing her stories on actual events she's not somebody that says okay well i'm going to sit here i'm going to research only and that's it and maybe interview some people she's out there she's doing the good work she's a true believer you know she's one of the those that like she says she's 
Uh, she has her own psychic abilities, uh, plus she hooks up with other people that are empaths. She goes out with ghost hunters, see what she comes across. Uh, and that story about her near death. Wow. Okay. And that's not the first time that I've had heard that description of what an NDE, you know, the positive side of it. And again, what I mentioned that uh, uh, most of the times when people come back, sometimes I've heard where they're sent back, but nine times out of 10, it's usually because they think about who they're leaving behind and they don't want to. They know that their death will cause that person pain, like her parents and her brother. Well, it's almost like a choice that you make. And in that instant, you make that choice and things switch out. And um, I think she's, I, I'm, I'm going to look into her books. I'm going to look at the new ones she's got. Just because, like I said, because of her background, her stories. I bet you she's got, because this is, believe it or not, for a writer, for a storyteller. Because that's what she is. She writes and she tells that story. This is the fodder. Okay, when you go out there firsthand, you have your own experiences, you talk to people, they tell you either what they're experiencing right then or something that happened to them a while back. Um, and like you said, some some people, no, I'm gonna say most of the people did, when they say things are being truthful, yeah. You, especially when um, there's either one, they wanna keep their privacy. I mean, there's nothing in it for them to gain out of telling you a story that's not true. You know, it's a, like I've said it before, some, you'd be surprised despite our present day uh, reality TV hype. A good portion of people is like, I want to keep a low profile in my, in my life. You know, and if I tell you the story, if you're going to use my name, just make, make, my, make me Bob or Mary, whatever. So I think that, uh, that yeah, that's, that's how you come up with fantastic stories. The kind that you... Think about when you put down the book or you finish the audio, however it is that you're coming across it. So fellow dweebs, unite. All right, guys, I hope you liked this video. Please hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell if you want to keep abreast of every time that uh, I uh, upload one of the videos and it's released. I do put out a podcast version of the show on iTunes, Spreaker, iHeartRadio. Uh, you can also go to my website at MiamiGhostChronicles.com depending on what season it is and you can download the mp3 file for the podcast also that way. Um, and uh, again I'm going to address this to my true believers out there, true believers, calling all true believers. Again, please send me your stories, video, record it, I don't care. Uh, I've been getting some uh, great things and I'm trying to put something together so I can do a little show just around some of the stuff that I've received uh, where I'm trying to uh, kind of thinking some of the shorter ones maybe put them either at the beginning or at the end of the show because some of them are fantastic they're great stories it's like what so guys please send them send them to me Marlene at MiamiGhostChronicles.com Facebook Twitter however you like tape yourself don't worry about it don't worry if you stumble over words I'll fix it I'll fix it I, I can edit it if I need to but it's not a big deal this is this is you telling me your ghost paranormal UFO Bigfoot cryptid uh, whatever story uh, I don't care I'm, I'm game for all of that so guys again thank you so very very much for watching the videos and for listening to the podcasts let me see what's today for me Friday. Have a fantastic weekend. Thank you so much. Take care.